Welcome back to FGO Primer. My name is Agent Psycho, aka Toa Sniper 98. This video will cover critical hit and critical star mechanics, which includes star weight and star generation. Once again, for much of this video, I'll be referring to Kite's posts regarding star weight and star gen on the Beast Slayer forums. Links in the description. In FGO, both your servants and enemies can perform critical hits with any attack that is not a noble phantasm, an extra attack, or full charge attack that enemy mobs and shadow servants have in place of their noble phantasms. Critical hits do double damage, and for your servants, they also double their MP generation off those attacks if applicable. Critical hits are determined differently for playable servants and enemies. For enemies, critical hits are simple. Most of them have fixed critical hit rates that are tied to their classes. Refer to this chart. Enemy Sabers, Lancers, Casters, Zerks, Rulers, Avengers, and Moon Cancers have base 10% chance to crit. Enemy Riders and Alter Egos have base 15%, Enemy Archers and Foreigners have base 20%, and Enemy Assassins have base 30%. This applies to both mobs and enemy servants. There are exceptions to this listed on the right. Bicorns, Demon Pillars, and most Werewolves, Jaguars, and Goblins have base 20%. Chimeras, Wyverns, and Ghosts have base 30%, and by far the worst are Assassin class Werewolves, Jaguars, and Goblins, who have base 60% chance to crit. Skills that increase playable servants' star generation buff enemy critical hit rates instead, since enemies don't use the critical star system that your servants do. Spriggans are an infamous example of an enemy type that has both a crit rate and a crit damage buff on their skill. The fixed crit rate mechanic explains the percentages that your servants have on skills that decrease enemy crit rate, because they interact additively. This means that skills or NP effects that debuff enemy crit rates by 30% are ideal for most situations outside of Assassin class Werewolves, Jaguars, and Goblins, and Servants, and other enemy types who have skills that increase their crit rates. Consequently, remember that star generation rate buffs for your Servants become critical hit rate buffs if you're fighting them as enemies. For playable Servants, critical hits are much more complicated, so let's start with the most familiar aspect of crits, which is critical stars. Your servants can produce critical stars with their attacks that they automatically collect after producing them, and on their next turn, the game distributes those stars to each of the five face cards that your servants get dealt for that turn. Each star represents a 10% chance of a successful crit chance, which means that 10 stars on one face card is a guaranteed crit, with 50 stars guaranteeing crits for all five face cards for that turn. So anything over 50 stars is useless because not only will your face cards that turn not be able to use the excess stars, but also those excess stars cannot be carried over to the next turn and will just be wasted. Let's discuss star generation mechanics first, which are actually simpler than you might think. In essence, star generation, like a lot of other things, is based on RNG. Your servants have a chance to produce stars with each hit of their face cards depending on their type. The percentages you see on skills that increase star generation for your servants additively improves those chances. The star generation formula for your servants looks like this, and like before we'll go over each variable one by one. Base star rate is your servants' default star gen stat that's determined by class. In case you've ever wondered what that's used for, it's used in this part of the star gen formula. First card bonus refers to quick leadoffs. Just like for damage in the previous primer episode where the game notifies you of a damage boost if you select the buster leadoff, the game informs you of a star generation buff for your entire chain if you choose a quick leadoff. The value is 20% if it is, and 0 if it's not. It's also set to 0 if the card you're using is an NP, meaning that Noble Phantasms, just like for Buster leadoffs, do not receive the leadoff bonus here either for Quicks. Because Quick leadoff bonus is only a 20% star gen buff for the rest of your chain, they are the weakest among the three leadoff types in the game because you're only adding an additional 20% chance to produce another crit star with your servants' hits. So the opportunity cost of a Quick leadoff is too pricey when you could be getting getting a 50% damage buff from a Buster leadoff, or a 100% MP generation rate buff from an Arts leadoff. The only time you should ever use a quick leadoff is for a quick chain, or a quick brave chain for the extra stars. This will become clearer as we progress through the video. Card star value refers to this chart. The percentages you see indicate the base chance that cards have of producing a crit star, which also depends on their position in a chain, just like for damage. Arts cards have no inherent ability to produce stars no matter what their position in a chain. Busters have 10%, 15%, and 20%, and quicks have 80%, 130%, and 180%. Extra cards have 100%, which should explain why your servants always produce crit stars no matter what their class, with their extra attacks, even servants who don't normally produce stars. 
Also keep in mind that MPs, like in the damage formula, assume first card bonuses for star gen as well. Card mod refers to color buffs, like for damage. This means that color buffs actually do affect star gen, even if it's not quick. Technically speaking, this applies to arts buffs as well, but because arts cards inherently have no chance to produce stars since they're all set to zero, arts buffs don't end up contributing to their card's star gen, so the only two color buffs that this applies to are busters and quicks. Server rate is a server-side variable that some enemies may or may not have that adds or subtracts some star gen probability, which can potentially cause those enemies to drop more or less stars when attacked. Archers give 5% bonus star gen, Lancers give 5% penalty, Riders give 10% bonus, Assassins give 10% penalty, and Avengers give 10% penalty. The Archer and Rider bonuses make sense because Lancers and Assassins are meant to be star generators due to their default decks. This potentially means that DW can control certain enemies to drastically affect your servants' star gens when attacked, but generally speaking you don't need to worry about this because you'd usually be able to tell if your servants are producing more or less stars than they should, assuming you're paying attention. Star Drop mod refers to your star gen buffs. To reiterate, star gen buffs are additive due to the star gen formula. Enemy Star Drop mod refers to debuffs that your servants can put on enemies that decreases their star gen. Because enemies don't have a critical star system like your own servants do, obviously skills like this don't exist, and so this variable is not used. Critical modifier refers to the star gen bonus that your servants get when they hit crits, which is 20% if successful and 0 if it's not. In other words, crits add 20% extra star gen to your face cards. Overkill modifier controls the star gen modifier value you get from overkill hits, which is 100% if it is and 100% if it's not. Yes, I'm serious, apparently that's how it's coded, because this means that overkill hits themselves aren't supposed to affect star gen at all. But there's one final variable, overkill add, which is set at 30%, which means that overkill hits actually do affect star gen by adding a flat 30% chance to all hits in the overkill state. TLDR, if you don't want to bother with all this math, star generation rate buffs directly add to your servants' chances of producing stars, so a 30% star generation rate buff, for example, adds 30% extra chance of producing a crit star per hit. And by extension, this means that a 100% star gen chance is a guaranteed crit star per hit, and a 254% total star gen chance, for example, means that you'll get two stars plus 54% chance of a third star every hit. However, the game hard caps total star gen chance at 300%, meaning that the max number of stars servants can generate per hit is 3, and any buffs over 300% star gen are pointless. This is why Caster Gills' S1 is such a good star gen skill, because it gives a 100% star gen boost that's both party-wide and lasts for 3 turns, meaning that it can turn even arts cards and MPs like his own, given that they have high enough hit counts, into star gens, so imagine what it must do for quick MPs. This is also why hit counts are so important for star gen, because the more hits a servant's face cards have, the more stars they'll produce. Unfortunately, this does mean that all the assassins who debuted with FGO's original JP release are terrible at star gen because DW clearly didn't know how their own star gen mechanics worked exactly, and gave them all one or two hit face cards, the only exception being Cursed Arm. This also explains why the first assassin they released after the OGs was Jack, who happens to be the best, or at least one of the best, star gen in the game, even five years later, because they realized that all the assassins before her are trash at star gen, no thanks to the low hit counts they gave them. Next is star weight. Once stars are produced, the game must distribute them to each of the five face cards that you draw for any given turn. To do this, it creates a weighed table based on both Servants' personal star weights and the 50-20-20 RNG factor that I discussed originally in my MHXA video. When you get dealt a hand of 5 cards, the game first randomly adds the 50-20-20 values to 3 out of the 5 cards before you get them. It then adds individual Servant star weight stats, and then multiplies those combined weights by whatever applicable star weight buffs. For example, Gil's S3 has a 600% star weight buff, so if he uses it, even if he doesn't get any of the RNG values, that's 153 times 6, which is then 918 total star weight. This is why Berserkers need extremely high star weight buff values to reliably gather crit stars like Raikou's S1, Zerkerlot's S1, and Bayo's buffed S2, because without them, their single digit default star weights won't ever collect any stars for them whatsoever. By extension, this is also why Riders are always consistent star gatherers because they have the highest default class star weight. 
the 50-20-20 RNG values also explain why some servants seem to randomly gather a bunch of stars for seemingly no reason, even if their classes aren't supposed to have high star weights on their own, and it's also one of the only ways for berserkers who don't have their own star weight buffs to have any chance of grabbing stars for themselves. Because star weight buffs come after the game assigns the RNG values, if you use them, they force the game to reassign them randomly again. This applies to both star weight buffs and debuffs, basically whatever changes star weight value which includes Mystic Code skills that do this too. And the reassignment mechanic is most noticeable from star weight debuffs, like MHXA's S3 in a full front line of Berserkers. Once star weights are calculated, the game then totals them up and creates the weight table that I mentioned a bit ago with the star weights of your face cards. The game then rolls a number between 0 and whatever the total weight is and distributes your stars one by one like this to determine where those stars go. Kite uses a dartboard or pie chart to illustrate this, refer to this one that I've made here as an example. On a side note, it's been noted that the differences in base star weight and star gen among servants in the same class are due to servant ranks in luck and agility, respectively, so those stats that servants have in their profiles actually do have an effect on their gameplay, though obviously it's just a tiny one and shouldn't actually affect any of their gameplay overall. One last critical hit mechanic is the hit count RNG manipulation that I discussed in my Hidden Mechanics video half a year ago. You can rewatch that portion of the video if you'd like for the full explanation, link in the description. The short of it is that the game calculates critical hit success by rolling a number between 1 and 100 for each card in a chain. If a number the game rolls like this is equal to or less than the crit chance of the face card that it's assigned to, that crit will succeed. So there are three numbers that the game rolls, one for each card in a chain, which individually determine whether or not the face cards will succeed their crits if they've managed to collect any stars. Hit counts have a hidden side effect of changing or preserving those three numbers that determine crit success. Basically, if your hit count total leading up to a particular face card remains the same, and you know that face card is a crit success, you can change whatever that card is with another face card that has an equal or greater crit chance to guarantee crit success for that other face card. This works because the individual hit counts of your cards can force the game to change those numbers that it rolls to determine crit success. So by changing those hit count totals, you can then modify crit successes for later face cards to make crits that might have failed before to succeed now, or keep them the same so that you can swap out a later face card in a chain for another card that has a higher crit chance. This does require some save scumming and is a bit too obscure to really be used consistently, and of course the nature of this mechanic means that it's not really applicable to your leadoff cards, but it might come in clutch here or there if you're aware of it and recognize such a situation where it can be useful. That's it for this video, hope you learned something, and thanks for watching.